Hi, this is Service Pro with the Dr. Vax channel, and today we're going to talk about leveling the bed of your 3D printer, specifically leveling the bed of an Ender 5, how you do it, why you do it, and why it's important. Okay, stay tuned and let's learn something together. So before we go to the printer hands-on to look at leveling the bed, I want to talk about the theory, the reason for just a moment. So if you look in the upper left-hand corner, you'll see a picture with three circles and three drawn simulated print heads. The circle on the far left, the print head is too far from the print bed. You end up with a very round bead of filament, but the filament's not going to stick to the print bed. That means when it comes around again to print the next layer, it's going to pop off. In the center example, the print head is too close to the print head in bed. In fact, if you get really too close, you'll damage your print head. In that case, the bead is very flat, and you'll notice on your first layer, when you're first printing out a object, the first layer will seem very, very thin. Um, this will also not be very, very effective. And the third one is just right, as uh, they say in the Three Little Bears. And that is a print bead that's slightly squashed. It will stick to the print bed, and yet it will maintain its, um, its volume because it's not pushed too low into the print bed. And in order to calibrate for that, I went into FreeCAD, and you'll see a picture in the upper left, and I designed this calibration print object. It basically consists of two squares. The outermost square is 150 millimeters square, 150 millimeters on each side. It's one millimeter wide and one millimeter high. Now you might ask, since a print head is 0.4 millimeters and the print layers I'm going to be using are 0.2, why don't I make it exactly that? Well, one of the challenges is that in current slicers, and you can adjust for this, but it's tricky. In current slicers, if a feature is smaller than a particular size, the slicer will, in, in fact, ignore it. So if I was to set this at 0.4 by 0.2, the actual rectangle, in terms of width and height, Cura, using the default settings, would ignore it. So one by one, is both more realistic of a real model, and we're trying to determine if the print bed height is level for a real model, and will work well with our slicers. And then there's an inside square, which is 50 millimeters on each edge. Um, one of the problems with many of the Creality printers is often there's a slight dip or bow in the middle of the print bed. And so this inner square will help with that. Now that said, Printing this is still tricky. It's tricky because um, this is a complex print. There's not a lot of surface holding the print to the print bed. If you were to print this with a brim, that's a single layer high uh, surface that's printed around it before it prints the actual object, it would adhere much better. If you were to print it with a raft, that's a multi-layer surface around the object. It would adhere even better. But we want to test a worst case. This is a good way to do that. Okay, let's zoom in on the print bed and on the um, control panel, the LCD panel on the Ender 5, and look at how you adjust to get the right distance between your print head and the print bed so you get that slightly squashed bead all the way around. Okay, to begin this process, we want to make sure that our magnetic print bed has no buckles. Um, if you get it, don't get it in just the right place, sometimes you will have bubbles in here. Then we're going to go to our console, to our LCD, our control console. We're going to go to prepare and select bed auto leveling. Now you would think that makes it automatic. It doesn't. All that's going to do is position the print head in each of the four corners and the center so we can level the bed. We'll go and click on next step, and this will move it to the first position. Okay, now that the print head is moved to the proper location, we are ready to begin leveling the bed. 
Underneath the bed, and it'll be hard for you to see from this angle, there are very large adjustment knobs, which make it very, very easy. When you turn these knobs to the right, which would be counterclockwise, you will move the print bed further away from the print head. When you turn them to the left, which will be clockwise, you'll move it closer. I like using a post-it note in order to do this. I hold it on the sticky side, you don't want the sticky side by the print head, and you slide it under the, between the print bed and the nozzle. Now if initially it's a little too tight, you can push down, there are springs here, you can push down to get that in. Then if this is properly adjusted, you should be able to slide by holding one corner of the post-it note, slide this back and forth. If it's a little too tight, you'll be able to pull it towards you but not push it away. If it's too loose, you will feel no pressure at all, no tension. You should feel that it's grating, it's rubbing just a little bit. When you get that adjusted properly by adjusting the knob in that corner, you go back to the LCD panel, you go to prepare, you go to bed leveling, and you click on next step. And your print head will move to the next position. Now you do the exact same thing. You slide this underneath. You make sure that you can go back and forth, but that you feel it feels a little gritty. It feels like there's tension there, but it will allow you to go back and forth. As necessary, you can make it a little tighter or a little looser. Turning it to the left, which is clockwise, will make it tighter. Turning it to the right, which is counterclockwise, will make it looser. Let's continue to the next position. Now we need to do the same thing. And this one is a little bit too tight here, so I'm going to push down on the spring so I can get this in. Uh, now once it's in, it feels almost okay. I'm going to make this just a little bit looser by turning it maybe a quarter of inch to the right. And now it feels just about right. Go to the next position. And push this down so we can get this in because the paper is a little curly now. And this feels about right also. And now we'll go to the final position, which is in the center. In general, I found the center is a little loose, um, and so one way to solve that is to put a little piece of painter's tape under the center of the magnetic surface. Um, because if you go around and you attempt to retighten all the perimeters to get the center perfect, if that bed is not perfectly flat, you'll never get it adjusted properly. So I have a little bit of tension, but not as much as I'd like here. We'll see how the calibration print goes. Now, once I've completed that, I go into my console, I say print from SD card, I go to Dr. Vax two box calibration, and this is going to heat the bed, it's going to heat the nozzle, and then it's going to begin the print. Okay, once the temperature comes up to speed, it will begin printing a skirt that is a single layer high um, extrusion around your print. This is used to prime the nozzle. Um, and one thing to note is that in addition to leveling the bed, the temperature of your bed and the temperature of the filament will have a dramatic impact on the adhesion. I find with Hatchbox PLA that if I run it a little hotter, than the default in Cura. I run it about 210 degrees by about 68 degrees, 210 degrees on the nozzle, about 68 degrees on the bed, I get better adhesion. And you'll see that this skirt is adhering nicely to the printer. And we'll let this go for a minute so you can see it begin to print the actual calibration cubes. So now it is drawing out the middle cube. And in spite of the fact that the middle of this bed was a little bit lower than the outside edges. It appears to be adhering well. There's a little bit of stringing. There must have been a blob 
of filament left from a prior print on the print nozzle. It's always good to knock those off before you start printing. And now it is printing the outside edge. And you can see that extra filament uh, did stick a bit. So let's see when this comes around to see if that's going to be a problem. Now you will probably have to do this multiple times. However, it is important to note, you don't need to wait for it to finish. You can take and pause this or stop this at any time. And on the Ender 5, because the nozzles are underneath and the print bed is not moving while it's printing a particular layer, you can adjust this live, which is an advantage of the Ender 5. So I'm going to pause this print. I'm actually going to stop it. So you can see what that looks like. And now I will make any adjustments that seem appropriate um, to either the bed leveling or the temperature. And I will continue to do this until I get to a really nice print. Okay, thank you for watching this video. I hope it was helpful to you. Uh, it ends up that the calibration models are a bit fun to play with once they're done. I did go around one more time and adjust each of the four screws to get it just perfect. Um, I hope this is helpful. I will make the calibration model available on Thingiverse. Thanks again. Please like this video, subscribe, share it with your friends, and have a great day. Let's continue learning things together.